So I started with Jiu Jitsu around about 16 years ago. Um, it was actually the first martial art that I got into. You know, I went along and uh, got in the gi, you know, traditionally and, and done it properly. And then it was when I went, met Brad Pickett that we kind of took us took a step aside from the gi. To be honest, I think when you're trying to get ready for the octagon, you know, it's better to go no gi and make it more specific. So, you know, I'm 16 years in now. Technically, I'm a brown belt. Um, but I'd like to think if I had the gi on, I would have been a black belt a long time ago. I come here. Now he's standing up straight. He's not, he doesn't want to come down. Straight away, guys. What I do usually, I pull from here. Obviously, with the stuff that I've got going on at the moment with my daughter, you know, it's very hard for me to commit to a date for the UFC. You know, they've not got any local shows. I got offered a fight which was a week before my baby girl's due date. And it was in Vegas, you know, and I just sort of said to the UFC, Look, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I can't, I can't be in Vegas and risk, you know, my, my wife going into labour, especially with the conditions that we've got. So Polaris came about and, you know, I've been matched on Polaris, I think, three times now. And every time I've been matched, the UFC have come about or something has got in the way and stopped me from competing. So now I've not got a fight booked, you know, I've got a, a clear schedule and it just made sense to go on there, you know, practice against one of the best guys in the country, Mason Jones. Mason the Dragon. He is a former UFC fighter, former double cage warrior as well champion. Black belt in judo, black belt in jiu-jitsu, so, you know, he's got all the credentials, he's been there, seen it, got the t-shirt. And uh, what better guy to go up against? Yeah, it's in his hometown, you know, it's in Wales, he's Welsh, so he's round the corner from the venue. I wouldn't say I have added pressure being the away fighter. Um, you know, I've still sold quite a lot of tickets, I still have a good little uh, group coming up with me. For me, atmosphere always does me better, so if the crowd boo me, I love it. If the crowd cheer me, I love it even more. So yeah, you know, I like to think that obviously with him being the, the home fighter as well, that he sold a few tickets and I'd like to think that we're going to have a decent crowd behind us uh, come March 23rd. I would say that I guess the advantages are all on his side, you know, being the home fighter, being the bigger guy. It is a weight above, so I'm actually weighing in at 77 kilos, even though right now I'm about 73. But you know, I believe that with my skill set, that I'll be able to handle myself at, um, at that weight. You know, luckily I get to eat whatever I want now, so you know, I'm trying to be obviously as healthy as I can be. But you know, I can have plenty of Nando's and stuff like that. So you know, I don't know what he walks around at, but unfortunately for him, he has got to cut down, I guess, some weight. But yeah, I'm just going to be happy. You know, first and foremost, focus on my family and then just go in there, have fun and hopefully come out with a good win. So today we're um, at New Street Square, which is a crush bar. And it's a bar that I like to come to to get a little bit of lunch after training. Um, you know, it's a very healthy gaff. So today we've got avocado, edamame and yuzu health pot. Or yuzu, however you say that, I'm not sure how you say it. We've got the chicken tabule. Um, and yeah, you know, I like to try and stick to the same thing every time I come here. It's what I know, you know, I'm getting plenty of my five a day. I'm getting my protein, I'm getting everything that I need basically to perform at my best. Keep my abs in and um, yeah, you know, I highly recommend it to anyone that is uh, looking to eat healthy and stay in shape. I've followed UFC for a number of years and um, I'm in my mid-40s now. Met Nathaniel maybe a year ago, um, I've always followed his fights and it was quite nice to know that he's been using Crush for um, a number of years and what we would like to see is obviously when Nathaniel's a, a UFC champion one day, uh, we've had a part of that, we've, we've given him the nutrition and element of it and the, uh, the fuel to, to push him to his limits and give him the energy to, to get through the rounds that he does and trains hard for. Wait, one second. Oh, yeah.
You know, Polaris for me at the moment is just something to keep me sane, if you like. I need competition, I need something to train for, I need something to focus on and this is what I love, you know, I love competition. So, um, yeah, you know, obviously I, I do this for a living, the UFC is where I earn my, my money, but, you know, even if I wasn't getting paid, I would still be competing. So Polaris is that little side mission that I needed to, to, to keep in the game. A normal week, I would wrestle on a Monday, I'd grapple jiu-jitsu on a Wednesday, and then on Friday we do MMA grappling as well, which would be um, basically jiu-jitsu with punches. So I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with my coach Ashley Grimshaw. My name is Ashley Grimshaw, I am a retired professional MMA fighter and I'm the founder of Woods Jiu Jitsu Coach. I've been training Jiu Jitsu for possibly 21 years now. Um, it was actually not my first thing, I did Judo first and then I got submitted in one of my MMA fights and I was like, you know what, I should probably learn this ground stuff and since then I've constantly done it. I'm a second degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> I've been working with Ash now probably for near on nine years and he was my first jiu-jitsu instructor that I would say was my weight. You know I had a black belt jiu-jitsu instructor that was my weight who could spar with me you know whereas former instructors they were a lot bigger you know it's not necessarily as specific when you're going with them. On Monday I'm his main wrestling partner on Tuesday I'll get a couple of rounds on Wednesday he demands rounds Thursday if I'm lucky unlucky should I say he'll go ask me again for sparring I work with him pretty much Fridays and on Saturdays it's just him and I. So the sparring rounds with Ash are great obviously I've got very used to him now um, we've been training for such a long time that I know exactly what he wants to work he knows exactly what I want to work but you know, he's a very selfless coach. You know, he'll give his students what he thinks they need to beat their opponent. And yeah, I'm very blessed and I'm very fortunate to have him. Um, you know, I've also got a jiu-jitsu instructor that's full MMA, so he knows the MMA world. You know, you know, there's a lot of instructors out there that, yes, they teach jiu-jitsu for jiu-jitsu, but it completely changes when it comes into MMA. So. I'm very blessed and very fortunate that I've got Ashley um, with me and you know I'm hope hopefully I have him for the rest of my career. Um, of course I'm not looking past MMA, you know, I'm still training for the UFC, I'm still striking, I'm still doing everything that I normally do. But all I've done is just increased a couple of sessions and a little bit more specifics for Polaris. So getting ready for a grappling competition instead of an MMA fight is quite simple. We just substitute striking sessions for more jiu-jitsu. We've got a load of other good grapplers that come in. So basically just loads of rounds and keeping them grappling fit. So I actually have more submissions in the UFC than, than anything. Um, I would say that Predominantly, I'm always going to come out as a striker. You know, to me, that's my A game. That's where I start. You know, it's like my primary weapon, if you like. I've never actually gone out with the intentions to sub any of my opponents. I've just seen the submission and took it at will. Um, it's an interesting opponent for Polaris because I think Mason Jones is actually more of a striker as well. It's quite interesting. You've got two strikers doing a grappling match, so it should be actually quite entertaining. I don't think uh, Polaris will be frustrating because it is just grappling. So, you know, I get to use my A game in Jiu Jitsu. When I train for MMA, when we grapple, you know, you don't want to be on your back, you know, because technically you're losing in MMA, you're getting punched, you're getting elbowed. So it's nice now that I'm able to actually train for a grappling match. You know, I'm able to use uh, the submissions that I've got off my back. I'm able to play more and just, in a way, have fun. <laughs> When he's here, it's work. He, and he goes 100% and he gives everything. You ask him to do something, he does it as hard as he possibly can for the period you've told him to do it for. He's very dedicated. I think it's three weeks now, three and a half weeks until Polaris, and I feel strong. I'm stronger than ever. 
fit, I'm healthy, you know, all I need to do now is keep in this shape, keep healthy, you know, touch wood, not getting any injuries, etc. And uh, yeah, just go in there, have fun and, and do what I do best. You know, I'm in a positive position. I think having things like my daughter going through CDH has put things into perspective like this Polaris fight, you know, it's, it's nothing. You know, at the end of the day, people are, oh, you're not nervous if you lose or you're nervous going into his hometown. Couldn't give a shit. You know, I'm positive. I've got a fire inside me at the moment and um, I'm training, as I think, the best I've ever trained. So. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to getting this grappling match done, getting a, getting a fight booked in the UFC and um, going to let off some steam. You have one new message. To listen to your messages, press one. For... You alright, Ben? I thought I'd let you know first, mate. Mason Jones has pulled out. 